Fellas, summer is just about over. Football season back again. Seems like 365 yeah. days a year. And the way the fan base is continuing to grow here at Liberty, that's a, a lot of people are talking about it, especially yeah. this season coming off of last year. And let's just kind of get into it right now. Coming off that playoff appearance, what is the next step for this program? You know, it's interesting. I know Matt was uh, has a lot of good ideas on that. But, you know, we always thought that if Liberty could get into the playoffs, they would see them come year after year after year after that. And I think that's going to happen. I think Liberty's positioned to continue to get into the playoffs. And, of course, with the automatic bid, that really helps. But its record, its past, I mean, even being rated in the top 15 in the preseason is a big deal. And just a carryover from last year, I think maybe the first time in 20 years that that's happened. So I think, um, you know, Liberty certainly wants to play for a national championship, but those top five or six teams matter just always really tough, yeah. I think, in the FCS. So it's hard to break in there against like a North yeah. Dakota State. Oh, absolutely. Well, and that's just the thing. I think, you know, you start hearing that national championship kind of buzz and while you always want that to be the ultimate goal, I think if you kind of label it as you know national championship or, or the season's a failure, you're really doing yourself a disservice, right? And you talked about it. For Liberty, they wanted so desperately to make the playoffs. They did that. Now it's about establishing yourself as a legitimate contender year in and year out. And so I think a successful season is making the playoffs again. And, and then you're, again, showing yourself as a consistent threat year in and year out. Sure, we would take the national championship, absolutely. One team gets that, and it's been North Dakota State for a right. while now. So just making the playoffs again, kind of building that tradition, really building the groundwork for this program, and I think it's a successful season. Where does it get to the point, though, to where you compare it to the NFL? If you don't win the Super Bowl for every team, <laughs> no. it is a failure. FBS, you get a bowl game to play yeah. it for. You get the bowl game, yeah. hey, it's been a good year. FCS, a little bit different. Mm -hmm. yeah. You get in the playoffs, you win a game, okay? Yeah. We need to win it all. Yeah. Well, and, you know, folks need to remember, too, that Liberty getting into the playoffs last year was no fluke. I mean, we've been trying to do this year in, year out, so close uh, so many times. So Liberty really, in essence, is a playoff team. And finally, we had the opportunity to, to showcase and win uh, in the playoffs. But, you know, you always have your eye toward that national prize. And, you know, Liberty will be competing for but, that. But to, as you said, you also don't want to set the expectations so high so quickly that when you fail to reach them, you're just so crushed when it's like, well, you maybe went too high too fast. I mean, remember, and it's a conversation for another day, was it Jeff Barber always points to his hand right here and says, that block field goal, it hit Chima right here, that's how close we were to missing out on the playoffs. If that doesn't happen, we're having a completely different conversation today. So to just that quickly go from playoff team to now win it all, I mean, let's again, it's a building process. North Dakota State didn't get there overnight either. You know, all of these teams that have been right there at the top all these years, it, it's a building process. And no doubt Turner Gill can get us there in an, however long that takes. Maybe he'll, the timeline will move faster than we even think. But those expectations, it's a dangerous game. Fans can play it a lot more. And, and, and we see how that kind of comes back sometimes and uh, can kind of change people's perceptions or what they, how they think a coach is doing or whatever. But yeah, that's not get carried away too fast too soon. I will say though being around the team the last couple of weeks down in Atlanta at Media Day you're hearing that those two words national yeah. championship they're thinking about it and obviously within the FOC yeah. they've got sure. you know, stuff up on the wall to keep them going. And I'll say goal. the most obvious statement any of us will say today you can't win the national championship if you don't make the playoffs. That's true. So you got to take it one <laughs> step at a time first well, step win the conference, get in the playoffs. And Alan, you're talking about that, and uh, you've got NCAA playoffs here on the back of Liberty's program. Yeah. You know, it's all about getting to the playoffs. It, but at this stage of Liberty's development, I think not getting to the playoffs is a huge disappointment after, again, the performance yeah. last year. And when you look at this offense and what's coming back, I think uh, that's the focal point of this team this yeah. year. And we'll start at the quarterback position, Josh Woodrum, who has gone on record to talk about He's the best quarterback in the country. And the two games that he missed because of an injury last year, that's why he's saying that. Because he got left off a lot of the postseason teams within the Big South. And he's got a little chip on his shoulder going into his senior year. It's a to boulder. Kind of prove <laughs> it's it a is, boulder on his to shoulder. To prove how good he is and how good do y'all think he can be this year. Well, I would say pretty good. I, you know, I had breakfast with him last week. Yeah. And oh, we chatted. Uh, yeah, yeah, wow. yeah right. Right. went to a fancy place. Yeah. And uh, what I was impressed with was his upper body uh, bulk and oh, yeah. strength. I, so since last season even, 
He's been in the weight room a lot, and you just, uh, you know, he's he's proven himself to be a runner and a passer. But uh, I, I don't know. I think he's more physically fit this year than maybe even last year, and he's always, of course, been at the top of his game. So I think he's determined, and it's in his heart and it's his mind, and he's preparing himself to really have an unbelievable year. There's no one more motivated on this team, I think, than Josh Woodrum. I mean, he's a guy. He wants the ball in his hands, late game situations. He wants to be the star. He wants to be the guy that puts the team on his back and carries them, which you want your quarterback to have that attitude. The fact that he wasn't on the field those last two regular season games, the fact that in perhaps the greatest game in Liberty history against Coastal Carolina, he was watching from the coach's box. I think that eats at him a little bit. He wants to be out there and do it and prove to the country that he's one of the best quarterbacks. And no doubt that motivated him during the off season. No doubt that'll motivate him in season. You just hope with things like that that it doesn't cause you to try to do things that you shouldn't do when you finally do get on the field. To still play within yourself and do the, do, you know, make the plays that you see and don't try to do too much because you're trying to prove too much. He's a smart kid. I think he'll be fine. But yeah, there's nobody more motivated than Josh Woodrum. And don't you think, too, not just nationally, but in the conference, I sensed from him that he was really upset that he wasn't the player of the year last year. And even preseason right. yeah. offensive player, uh, was it Alex Ross at, yeah. at yeah. Coastal? And so, I, you know, he's probably his chief competition, I think, in this whole thing. And of course, Ross is a little bit untested. He had that surgery in the offseason. And so nobody quite knows how he's going to be. But. Uh, it's going to be a fun year to watch that statistical battle and percentage of completions and all that. It'll be fun. And as you look at his backup, Stefan Masha, a guy yeah. that last year got a lot of playing time, not only yeah. in a starting role those last couple of games before the playoffs, but also kind of is the wildcat, kind of scat back type of guy to kind of get his feet wet. And we were all, I know, impressed yeah. by what he brought out. There. I'm going to be interested to see how they use him this year, how they use Masha, if they try to get him some series here and there, or you still use him in some of those wildcat things. He's such a good athlete. I feel like you have to try to get him on the field. But the thing this year is, last year you had Javin Shashati as quarterback as well, yeah. who at least had some experience. So if something were to happen to either Woodrum or Masha, you felt like you still had another guy that had been on the field. You don't have that other experienced guy at the quarterback position now. So if something happened to either to Masha, say he was playing at a wide receiver spot for playing, got hurt, well then suddenly you have a really unproven kid behind Woodrum now. So yeah. I wonder if that'll play into their mind at all in how they use him and how much they use him this year. Speaking of how they're going to use players, the backfield. Right. It seems like year in, year out, that position for Jamal Fobbs is always stacked. Yeah. And it is, again, with the reemergence of Dez Rice coming off the knee injury. DJ Abner, we all know what he did last yeah. year, first yeah. team all-conference. But he also was coming off a foot injury that yeah. kind of limited him during spring ball. So how is that dynamic going to play out? It's definitely good to have a lot of horses in the stable, but yeah. we'll see how fall camp uh, kind of unfolds. Yeah, you know, DJ Abner, I think, surprised a lot of people when he really stepped up last year. It was the second or third game of the season. It was like he made that position his own and I think uh, surprised folks and really carried forth and did the job. And you talk about how folks could get injured all season long and he stayed in there. But Rice will be, um, you know, it'll be fun to watch them and, and almost compare them because we haven't, we didn't get to do that last year. And Todd year. Nakin's another guy, That's, too, I was just going to say. He's got as much ability as those two guys. There's a lot of well. guys over in that building that say he's going to be special. And so, yeah, he was banged up last year, too. But I'm interested to see with, with a healthy DJ Abner, assuming that he is that, just the w other ways they can use him. I mean, mm -hmm. I think you, we talked mm -hmm. about it before, you put him out at slot sometimes and try to get a linebacker covering him in space. There are a lot of unique ways that you can use DJ this year that maybe you didn't feel like you could as much last year. So I'm interested to see how they use him. And then Des Rice, I mean, the first time he goes into the end zone this year will just be such a special moment for him yeah. after all that he's gone through. Can't wait to see him back on that field. And I mean, I'm interested to see kind of the, the run pass, like how balanced it is. Because if you're a defense, what exactly do you do to stop them? We know, and I, maybe you're going to talk about Darren Peterson next, but we know one of the best wide receivers in the country. And then you got those runners in the backfield. I mean, pick your poison. They can be as balanced as any team as they want and beat you a variety of ways. Yeah, talking about Petey Peterson was out of practice this week and just a guy along with DJ Abner, two seniors that just love football. I know one thing for me, I, I miss DJ Abner's smile during yeah, the offseason. Yeah. So it's good to see number two back out there going at it. But the skill positions on the outside, Darren Peterson, we all know. Yeah. Dante Shell's kind of an X factor, a guy yeah. that showed glimpses of brilliance yeah. last year. Had some trouble with his hands yeah. and so and Gabe Henderson is a third down receiver kind yeah. of a slot back 
who can fill that void? And so that's a position, although well stocked, there's some question marks is there as well. Yeah, and I think it's going to be fun to see what that pass run sort of percentage is for Coach Gill. You know, he always talks about you know running more than passing or a little bit more. And uh, but it always Liberty always reminds me of a passing offense. You know, so it'll be fun to see where they find the balance among all of those skilled players. You talk about shells, and he certainly did show flashes in the injury. You felt like he was really reaching that potential right when the injury bug bit him last year, and it kind of derailed him a little bit. But you think about, yeah, Gabe Henderson, huge catches for this team. Dexter Herman made yeah. some huge catches for this team, especially it seemed like third down plays. He was a guy that Woodrum would look to. So you're going to have to have some guys step up there. I think Zach Parker is a guy that you're going to need to see kind of emerge and make some plays. He did a few things last year. He had uh, a couple of little sweeps and things that they put in design just for him. But he's going to have to assume a bigger role. And then past that, it's a lot of question marks. Right. You know they have talent there. It's just how fast can they come along. Kendall Kuman, another guy at the tight end position that has tons of talent. Now he's going to have to put it you know, in the game. We see it in the practice field. Now it has to transfer to the game. Uh, the good news is you've got talent there. You have options there. It's just going to be which one of those guys kind of rises to the surface. Including the guy like Dakota Kelly, yep. who the lineage of that last name with his brother Pat yep. and what he has meant to this program. And Dakota, even last year, towards the end of the year, made some big catches yep. for this team especially in the Coastal Carolina game, which we've already yeah. well documented. So uh, offensively, I just can't wait to see kind of yeah. what they throw out there. Yeah. And only time will tell to see how good that group can be. And the offensive line, though, we've all talked about yeah. three starters coming back. But in my case, one of those is not your center. Greg Ray has graduated. Yeah. Lucas Holder now is the heir apparent to come in there. One of our snappers a year ago that did get some experience yeah. late in the year. So how well will it take that offensive line? Because we all know it doesn't matter how good your skill guys are. Yeah. If your offensive line can't block them, the skill guys can't do what they want to do. Yeah, yeah. it's true. And yeah. a lot of unsung heroes, you know, on the offensive line. Everybody takes them for granted. They get up there and do their thing. But, uh, yeah, losing the center from, from really a series of years of just consistency and no problem is a big – it's always hard to replace the center. So it will be interesting to see how they do that. One way you hope they can kind of get around if there is a little struggle early on is the fact that they should be able to run the ball so well. It's easier to run block than pass block, right? You know, hit them quick, get after it. So if you have that, maybe that can kind of buy them some time as you hand the ball off a few times to guys like Abner and Rice, and they don't have to hold that block as long. So defensively now, let's go to the other side yeah. of the ball. Where do you guys want to start with it? Nick Newman. <laughs> I mean, this kid This kid is, I mean, I'm, if, you, if I were to put, like, the top three players I'm most excited to see play this year, he's probably, like, one or two. I'm that excited about him. What we saw from him late last year, 6'4", rangy kid playing linebacker just all over the field. This kid is just a, a guy that just jumps off, off the tape when you watch it, and I think he's going to just blow up this year. And, and uh, yeah, watch him. That's, that's what I'm looking forward to watching on this team. For me, I think it's the front forward. you got to look at Jerron Green, Chima Uzuwehe, yeah. and what that group continues to do. And ever since Turner Gill got here in 2012, he's always talked about the defensive yeah. line. Van Singletary has done a tremendous job with that group no year in and year out. And we went bowling with him earlier they look? last week. At side of pads, <laughs> I'm talking about a very menacing team. Yeah. And that's just the type of talent yeah. that Coach Gill has started to get here in his recruiting classes. So yeah. for me, the defensive line is going to be a strong, strong part for this team. And the secondary, a lot of talent coming back, a lot of talent that's not coming back. Yeah. You look at Jacob Hagan, who's in the league right now. So. I, I definitely the back end of the defense is going to be some question marks, but hey, they've got 23 practices to get ready to get those guys ready, but there's still some guys in the stable that can help out in the back of the secondary. You know, I just, I love watching the linebackers. That's my favorite position on defense to watch. And, um, you know, it's just thinking that Nick Sigmund is not going to be I out know. there. How about you know, that? A name that we just have called year after year. Uh, but those guys, you know, there's another Nick that will yeah. step up. Yeah. And, and uh, I was thinking of O'Grady, uh, who, who's had yeah, a Jimmy. good career. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A senior season for him coming up. So it just seems like the guys, when given the opportunity, will step up to the challenge. And another guy to watch, the Avery James, a guy that's kind of maybe that hybrid linebacker safety type. So we're going to see him on the field a lot. Your point about the defensive backs, too. They're young, right? Gildery and Holloway, they're only sophomores, but they're experienced. I mean, they took their lumps at times last year, but I think this year, that's going to benefit them. You know, there were times last year where it's like, man, do, are we almost like are we giving them too much responsibility too soon? Appalachian State. Appalachian State's the one that jumps out to me too. 
but maybe now this year you'll kind of reap the benefits of that because they will have had that experience. And now, I mean, they're, they're sophomores, but right. they're more experienced than most sophomores. And they've got a guy back there that's played a lot of football, Wesley Scott, Absolutely. who's played a lot of nickel yep. in his career, but he's going to be counted on for more leadership this yeah. year, being an upperclassman in that secondary. Special teams-wise, not much to worry about there. John <laughs> yeah. Lunsford has as good a leg as anybody yeah. at any level in the country. Your punter's back in Trey Turner, yeah. great snapper back. So we all know the leg that John's got, and he had a really bounce back year, in my opinion, from yeah. his sophomore year two years ago. And it's just a great weapon to have. So yeah. special teams, I think, sometimes is not thought about as highly as it should yeah. be sometimes, but I know the coaches and the players don't look at it that way. Now, Alan, I know you don't follow people on Twitter no. or anything like that, but I follow a lot of those athletes, and, you know, John Lunsford has really been doing a lot of training, it seems to me, with a lot of mentors and experts mm -hmm. and people coming in and sort of guiding him, and I really think this will be a, an unbelievable year. I know it's a mental game. There's a lot that goes into it, and you got to be given the opportunity to kick that 65-yard field goal or whatever, <laughs> but I think this is going to be a really good year for him so he's going to go to 65 this time oh right? i think he could do it okay I, I think the big question mark if there's one on the special team side is the return game yeah and that was a that was a huge issue last year and we talk about a guy we mentioned zach parker earlier i think he's going to be a guy that gets a lot of opportunities back there they kind of tried that last season and again you saw talent back there but there was more of the mental mistakes and guys just maybe not being as aggressive as they should be hopefully now another year older a little bit more experience you'll kind of be able to clean up those things because I mean, we were in the kick return game. That was just such a huge struggle year in and year, or not, or game in and game right. out. And that's kind of that hidden yardage you don't think about, but that can make a huge difference. And that's something that really hasn't been a focal point to this. It hasn't been ever since probably Kevin Fogg was yeah. back there returning kicks. Yeah. It hasn't been one that teams are thinking about, oh, wow, you know. But it's something that Coach Gill has yeah. really stressed the last two or three years. That is one part that we honestly have to improve yeah. if we're going to be a top notch football program yeah. so we, we got spoiled with Kevin oh, Paul. <laughs> I mean just you just didn't know what he was going to do just a lot of fun but um, you know coach Gill was saying that they you know structurally are very sound in the return game you know they've got good blockers and all that but he said you just watch any good return team it's not the blocking that causes the great uh, plays it is that uh, return guy mm -hmm. and they just haven't found the right guy yet but this could be the year you know being around this team and just like we talked about how focused everybody is yeah. and coach Gill he, he's been a man of, of zero tolerance he's like you're gonna buy into this program and this is what we're gonna do and they're buying into his philosophies and I think the way the team works and how much they've committed to being that upper echelon team it, it sometimes when the coaches can't be around you need those players yeah. to kind of police everybody and that's the team that he's got now. When the players are accountable for yeah. doing things, I remember a specific situation, I can name any players, during spring ball, they were doing some drills, coaches were out there doing yeah. some stuff with them, and it wasn't so much a practice as it was competition between the players. And I was talking to one of our players after I observed him being accountable for some of the players on the team, I said, I can't play anymore, yeah. but that got me really excited to see that the coaches aren't saying, hey Mike, hey Matt, you need to do this. It was the players. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were barking at each other. I'm like, you know, this is our team. We have to do this. And it was right after spring break. Yeah. And they wow. came back after a lot of the kids went to the beach or whatever. And this particular player was saying, hey, this isn't spring break anymore. You know, this might be April, but we're preparing for September and October, November. And that just got me completely excited for this team. Well, and that's why, that's, yeah, good reason to get excited because when we talk about not only do they have talent coming back, which you always need, but they have talent that also they're leaders on this team. You want your best players to be your leaders, and it seems like they have that in the guys coming back. Experience, talent, leadership. You combine all those things, and it can be a real special year. Challenging schedule okay. as it continues to yeah. ramp up in competition each year. Yeah. And we'll take the time to kind of go through yeah. it right now. We always know we start September 5th against yeah. Delaware State here at home. And then things kind of shift and ramp up a notch the next week going to Morgantown to play yeah. the Mountaineers of West Virginia. So when you look at the schedule, any particular game stick out? 
personally, I know this will sound funny, but I'm looking forward to the Kennesaw State game. I know it's homecoming. Just because it's a TV broadcast, right? It's a TV <laughs> game. Yeah, it is absolutely. a TV game. But, uh, you know, I lived in Kennesaw for about 12 years. Okay. And so I watched Kennesaw grow as an institution. I mean, they were just a small school. And they have just grown and grown. And uh, Vince Dooley is there helping them with their football program. Uh, this is not going to be like a great year for Kennesaw State, but just the fact that they have now put a football f uh, team on the field and the start for them, I, I think it's going to be really fun to watch Kennesaw State just from a personal They've angle. circled that game as well because that's homecoming. And typically yeah. in the past, you look to see who you scheduled for homecoming, the opponent, they think yeah. they're undermined a little bit because a lot of what they schedule for homecoming because it's a guaranteed easy right. win. Yeah. Yeah. Kennesaw State's gonna have a little chip on their shoulder coming in here on October 24th. This this schedule, and we talk about you know national championship aspirations. I feel like with this schedule, you're gonna kind of be able to measure yourself in the non-conference season to see kind of where you stack up against some of these teams, and that's a good thing to get tested and kind of just see kind of where you stack up. You talk about Delaware State coming off a bad year, new coach that you'd expect to win that, but yeah, West Virginia, you're not gonna be favored. Right. Montana, you know, 12th in the nation preseason. We know they're always good. That's gonna be a challenge. Southern Illinois, that's a game maybe people are kind of sleeping on a little bit. They were 6-6 six and six last year. You just look at that. But we went to Indiana State. That conference in Missouri Valley, you know, Sweet. I call it the SEC of the FCS, right? And Southern Illinois, they lost those six games. Five were against ranked teams. Two of those were against the teams that played in the national championship. And the other loss was against Purdue. So they're going to be good, or at least a challenge on the road. And then you talk about Georgia State. They were bad last year, but as a Sun Belt team, we're going there on their homecoming. You talk about playing on homecoming, and they have a week off before they play Liberty. So they got two weeks to prepare. So this whole non-conference schedule, really once you get past Delaware State, I mean, it's tough. It's tough. This schedule is definitely a test, but you hope you can get through it above 500 or even better than that. And, uh, and then, you know, really get after it once you get into conference play. But no doubt, they'll be tested. And you schedule. talk about conference play. Good teams in the league. We're not just talking Liberty, Coastal, yeah. Charleston, Southern. They're all improving. Yeah. Harold Nichols at Presbyterian College was the co-coach of the year last year. So don't sleep on the Big South either. Yeah. It definitely prepares Liberty and for those teams for those playoffs. And the Big South, we talked about it last year. They rank, obviously, the, the RPI, if you will, yeah. for football yeah. teams. They also rank the conferences. And the Big South was right up there along with the Missouri Valley that we've all talked about. So Well, it's been fun to watch over the last, I don't know, four or five years, but it seems as if the Big South has really replaced the Southern Conference as a more dominant conference here in our region. You know, I used to grow up watching the Southern Conference, and, and they, they, I guess with the loss of Appalachian and, Georgia of course, Southern. Georgia Southern, yeah. they're a little bit different shape than they were before. But, um, but the Big South, yeah, it's definitely rising. And, of course, Alan, we can't forget Coastal Carolina. Liberty and Coastal Carolina here in Lynchburg in the last game. And I know it's around Thanksgiving break, which is always a nightmare in that scheduling, but I'm sure students and fans will rally to be here. And if you've looked back the last two battles, both overtime, both Classics. ended on blocked kicks. Yeah. What's in store for the, it's not the third installment, but if you look at the last two yeah. years, it could be pretty special. And how the league it used to be Liberty and Stony Brook ending the season for the conference championship, and now had tip off the cap to Kyle Kalander for moving the Coastal game with Liberty to the last game of the year because it just builds excitement. Absolutely. And uh, with the addition of Kennesaw State, gives another challenge to this schedule. So it should be an outstanding 2015 season. Don't forget these two come and do a TV set near you. And Mike and Matt, if you want to go over the schedule real quick of the games we do know that we will televise, let our fans know. Uh, my understanding is that every game, with the exception of possibly the West Virginia game, will be available by video, either online or television. LFSN is committed to three games, two of them in September. Uh, the uh, Delaware State game to kick off the year, and then, of course, we'll go on the road to Southern Illinois at the end of September. We've got the homecoming game with Kennesaw State, and then there's a couple of games in November that we're just sort of waiting at Walk the yeah, yeah, yeah the, the Big South Conference may want those games. If they don't want them, of course, we'll do them, but they have the uh, first dibs on any of the games for TV, so uh, Charleston Southern and Coastal Carolina. Ooh, I'd like to do the Coastal Carolina yeah. game. Absolutely, and if they don't let us do them, we'll come to your house and sit and eat with you and <laughs> just talk about the game there if you want. I mean, so we're open to doing that, too. Yeah. So the weekends are open for you guys when you're not working, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah you know, I think right. so. All right, that's going to do it here from Liberty University for Mike Tilly and Matt Warner. I'm Alan York for the Liberty Flame Sports Network.